Hey, Adam Savage in my cave. Welcome to part three of our spacesuit build. And as a reminder, this project came to be because the gaming network G4 approached me earlier this year about building something super cool to celebrate the relaunch of their network. And I immediately thought, spacesuit, like I do with pretty much everything. They loved this idea. And at this point in the build, we are past the construction parts. And what's really happening for me mentally is that I understand the build and now I'm just executing parts to make it better and better and better. I'm layering in detail. Uh, every day is an adventure. And each day at the end of the day, I took a picture of that day's construction and I would go home and every night I'd be looking at the pictures on my phone, like mooning over, yes, pun intended, mooning over each of the images. Also, Kevin Pereira, host of G4's Attack of the Show, came and got to see how much progress we've made. So the arms I'm really, really happy with. They're moving well, they pivot. I've got some old suit uh, wrist rings that I've tossed on here. I think I'll probably leave those. Uh, okay, moving on from that part, I have decided to throw out my shorts. Uh, the hard shorts of this suit <clears throat> was adding two more bearings to each leg, one here and one here. And I did a test fit of it late last night and it was just, it was clear there was so much engineering problem solving within that just alone, coupled with the fact that nobody looks at the pants. You're not looking at, I'm not looking at the pants. Um, <clears throat> coupled with the further fact that when NASA, uh, at least in the beginning when NASA was testing out this specific style of hard upper torso, uh, they were using some pants that were compatible from some of the EMU suits that they currently had. So those pants were soft without a bunch of bearings and structure in them. Uh, sorry, they may have had some structure but not the same super rigid set of structures. That's what I'm going with. I'm gonna go with soft pants, similar to my EMU suit. Um, and I feel good about that decision. The, the other way was going to be the way of madness. I started knowing I was gonna design this suit, but I didn't know what I wanted out of the design. I just knew that I wanted to make a suit that was uniquely mine. Um, but that always requires some kind of a narrative because I'm gonna be making design and aesthetic and engineering choices and those choices don't have any cohesion unless I wrap them around a story. And I, I've been sort of following my muse on this and just ordering parts and grabbing some things and like exploring ideas. And I was thinking to myself, if you had a, a moon suit, like what's, let's call it a super advanced hazmat suit, right? For a hostile environment. Let's say it's the future and you wear one of these for work for your job on the moon, I was thinking, well, your foreman's gonna wanna know who's out there and where they are. And it's not like visibility decreases on the moon, but you will like a quick note as to who's out there. And on a factory floor, they do that with light beacons. There are light beacons on the machines of a factory floor. So a foreman, a supervisor, the workers can see which machines are going, which machines are not, which machines are warming up, etc. So I bought one of those, this thing, and I was thinking this would be the light that should be on the suit going boop, 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 boop. And then I looked up the colors and I realized, you know, red is warning and so is orange and yellow too feels a little warning like, but blue is the color of this machine is working. So, I took it, I cut the red lens that I had bought out of it. I made my own little acrylic lens. I bought a strobe, 12 volt strobe that I popped in there. It is exactly as bright as I was hoping without like hurting your eyes when you stare at it. I'm so happy about this thing. And the moment I saw it, I also am doing Hollywood style lighting. I know, I know, I know. Sorry, I'm a Hollywood model maker. <laughs> effectively, I had to put in the Hollywood style lighting. Of course I did. Um, but once I put this on, then I really started understanding the narrative of these suits, that these are like, I pictured this as like the crew of the Benthic Explorer, which is the, the, the bottom dwelling ship from the abyss. Uh, Virgil Brigman's crew, Ed Harris is the, Ed Harris would be the supervisor for my moon crew, right? Yeah, of course. So now that I have this narrative, now plugging pieces into this suit becomes a lot more understandable to me. And again, having a story to wrap my decisions around makes them a lot tighter. And so now I'm in the super fun part of the build where, you know, I really kind of understand how this suit fits into its narrative and what I'm gonna put on it. 
I realize that nobody really looks at the pants of a spacesuit, but the boots are really important. And I have spent a lot of time looking at boots. I mean, like a decade. When I made my alien spacesuit, there are so many different versions of the boots in the film. Okay, three different versions, but like I didn't know which one I wanted. And in the end, I went with a pair of snowboard boots because they were comfortable and they fit the bill. And I feel like that's what John Mollo's crew probably would have used as a base. But again, this isn't about that. This is about the fact that I've looked at thousands of pairs of boots online looking for boots that could be modified into moon boots because like this, Nothing looks quite like this, but it's so iconic. This is Ryan Nagata's incredible work um, of a silicone, silicone and uh, metallic fabric moon boot. It is a masterpiece. And I want something that is evocative of this. I don't want to make exactly this, but I want something evocative. So last week I was searching for boots and I'm doing vintage moon boots. I'm looking at moon boots in other countries. I'm searching Denmark's YouTube, uh, eBay. Really, I go far and wide looking for this. And then it occurs to me, wait a minute. What about slipover boots? What about boot cover boots? Because like <clears throat> my friend who grew up in Montreal, like you wore dress shoes to work. You just put them inside these winter boot covers. So then last week I go online and for the first time in a decade, it occurs to me instead of searching for boots, what about boot covers that go over your dress shoes when you live in a place that's cold and wet and wintry for a large portion of the year? I had just thought about boot covers because of a friend of mine who grew up in Montreal and told me that like that was part of life. And the moment I entered boot covers into Google image search, I found what I was looking for. I mean, like, this was the first search result. It, I mean, within the first like few results. I cannot believe that I found this on one search term after a decade of looking for pretty much precisely this. This is exactly the boot that I wanted. It's absolutely perfect. I don't like the black. <clears throat> I am going to change the color. Uh, and lucky for me, there is a company that makes a, 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 like a plastic rubberized coating. You put it on the handles of your tools, for instance, and they have been expanding their line out beyond tools and other personal objects to cars. So they make a like rubberized coating you can spray to change the color of your car. And when you're tired of it, you can peel it back off again. It is the perfect coating for boots. I've done a couple of tests with this stuff uh, and they worked good enough. They held on tight. So I've ordered a blue that I really like. That's the other thing about this plastic rubberized coating company. They make all these different variable colors, which are awesome to choose from. I've picked a blue I love. It's arriving today. I'm going to spray paint these and then I'm going to start dressing them. And uh, I'm only really need to dress from here down. Um, yeah, the break on space pants is quite high. <laughs> uh, this, the cuff of the pants goes right over this. Uh, and then, I'll, so all I'm really dressing is right here with some white and some buckles and some blue. Let's get these boots going. These can go to my buckle storage. Yes, I have buckle storage. I like this tightening system and I'm going to fake this tightening system. I bought a couple of these and some of the NASA boots, they have this system sitting right here for tightening the boots. I am not going to make it mechanically work because I don't need to but I am going to utilize these because I like the way they look. I'll just be trimming them down and gluing them. Yeah. It's just for a really specific visual. Now I'm going to hit this black with some silver. 
Here's hoping that gives me something. I'm using a leather spray silver. Uh, in my experience, that tends to cover pretty well. Uh, this is the silver I used for the silver on the leather gloves of my 2001 spacesuit. Great. Great! I'm very happy with this. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Nice. The basic lesson I have learned from using leather color spray is that it often sticks to stuff that nothing else will stick to. And if you have a problem of, oh, specifically, spray paint often does not like to dry when you spray it on vinyl or urethane. It tends to not want to dry. Leather spray dries. And it is what we used on my Iron Man because there are some rubber transition parts on my Iron Man Mark II. Those we sprayed with leather spray and man, they just, they held their color. That looks great. You'll see here what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, like it's real. All of a sudden these look much more like the moon boots I was hoping for. The thermoplastic I'm currently working with is Kydex. It's a thermoplastic just in the same way that styrene is a thermoplastic, but it is vastly different in terms of its properties. Kydex, with styrene, the moment you get enough heat to get it soft, it gets like floppy, like noodles. With Kydex, there's a much broader range of workability within the heat uh, bandwidth. Uh, and it's, when it's set, it's actually really super durable. Um, it's used for uh, like low profile pistol sheaths, knife sheaths, uh, and stuff like that. I have a bunch on hand at any given time because it's very useful stuff. It's fascinating when you're looking at a suit like this that NASA is currently developing because they don't have any of the attachments on it that will be on it when they're using it in space or on the moon because they're not solving for those problems. Those are future problems. They're solving for the function of the suit. But I want to think about future problems. So I made this head unit out of foam core and it's almost right. But then I was like looking at it and I'm like, it's not like it's wrong, but it's not right. What's so that tells me that maybe something's missing. So then I'm looking at it and I'm like, what kind of stuff do I need to balance here? And then I grabbed a couple of dowels and I just tossed them in here. They're now really getting super loosey goosey, but I tossed them in here like this. And the moment I tossed them in, I was like, yeah, that's the story. Look, I don't know if you need antennas sticking out of your suit on the moon, but I know that my moon suit needs these antennas sticking out of it to tell the story of what it is that I want to tell. The moment I saw that, then I'm like, oh, this is great. So uh, the next thing Brat is working on is um, a nice version of this piece of garbage, which I made uh, to look all cool here. Oh, there he is.
halftime press State of the Union. The suits are going well. There's this doldrums in like the second half of any project where in the first half you were making the forms and progress felt like it came easy and fast, right? And that was definitely where we were last week. Then you hit the like second half of the project and it feels like a lot of like paddling in place without much improvement. That's the part we're in right now. I leave every day and I'm like, it doesn't look that different. But it does. It regularly looks incredibly different. It's just in subtle ways. We got our first cloth coverings on the shoulders. I'm ecstatic about them. The forearms look amazing. Christine is patterning out uh, this part right now. Uh, the blower works fantastically. I'm s I could not be happier with my work light strobe. Uh, it blows a really nice amount of air and the Hollywood lighting I'm really happy with how the Hollywood lighting looks. Jen is working on the visor right now and Brett is finishing up on the head units and about to jump into the um, control display unit. We're on good track. I managed to buy a fantastic rechargeable, oh yeah, there's no brand name on this, rechargeable lithium ion with 12 volt and five volts out and 12 and five are the two voltages I'm working with inside this thing. So I'm just charging this right now uh, but that's great. That should give me hours, literal hours of uh, uninterrupted play. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, oh, it's much easier this way. All right, here you go. Oh, sorry. Stuff it right where my chest is going to touch. Right, right there. Perfect. All right, go ahead and close it. It feels great to wander around a little bit. Oh, wow! Look at the lighting! The lighting's amazing! This is great! Incredible. I am super happy. I think that's a good end to today. Blast off. Okay. As you can see, both suits are behind me and they are in a uh, almost identical state of construction because I'm building them simultaneously. Um, but I'm at the stage in the build where I've gotten most of the mechanical parts solved. I've got my air recirculation. I'm working on comms and lights. But what this means is I'm going to have a suit in which I have some things happening over here electrically and some things happening over here electrically. And I have made this door, the back door of the suit removable with these quick release pins for a reason so that I can pull it off the suit and work on it if I want to. But that means that I can't wire electrically directly between them. I need to be able to unplug that stuff. Over here, you can see the early parts of my attempts to do this system. And again, the only thing that's wired up here is the lights inside the helmet and the air recirculation. There's like a whole bunch of other circuits. Um, and where do we go from here? Like there's uncompleted parts of the electronics. There are plugs that need to be put in. Basically it's time for a wiring diagram. What is a wiring diagram? Yeah, let's do some wiring diagramming because this is not something I've ever been taught how to do. However, I have a method that works pretty well for me and it seems to be what most people do. So let's get into it. So the first thing about a wiring diagram is you're gonna make like two or three just to get it straight. Um, and uh, the second thing about a wiring diagram is it is not a topological map. It is a philosophical map. And by that I mean, don't worry about the shape of your electronics project when you're working on a wiring diagram. You're literally going to mark out the big parts, power, switch, con power conversion, 
uh, whatever input you might have, output, uh, and then you're going to connect those dots. You don't have to worry about the topology of your project. It's actually, that was very freeing for me. Um, actually, I should tell you, the first wiring diagram I ever built was my R2-D2. And similar to this, a bunch of different electrical things going on. Lights blinking, those are 12 volts. There's a servo making a wheel turn, that's three and a half volts. There's other stuff that's nine volts, and I need all those systems to be serviced by the same battery, but on separate systems so they don't interrupt each other. And after thinking about it for a while, I literally, just drew out all the pieces and then connected between them and then labeled that and then labeled my wires the same labels and plugged it together and it worked on the first try. That was a total fluke, like total fluke. That's not a testament to my brilliance at all. Just occasionally stuff works on the first try. This is actually a reasonable depiction of three of the main components. I've got visor lights. I will have work lights up here. The blower is going, and my safety light is going. Um, there's also going to be a public address system built in here. A little, uh, everyone move out of the way, please, that kind of thing. Uh, and there may be, well, I'm definitely putting a microphone outside that you can hear from inside. Um, I'm not sure if what you hear will be speaker-driven or headphone-driven. It's probably speaker-driven, to be honest. Um, I'll have to play around with that. One of the information management parts that's difficult about this build is that each of these suits now has tons of little tiny components that go with each suit. And just trying to keep track of all that is um, a little bit of a thing. Okay, so the blower, and this is 12 volts. The blower is 12 volts. I'll circle all the voltages. Okay, and now there is, um, this is the control unit. It's called the display control unit, but there's no display on mine, so it's just the control unit. One of my favorite axioms in the shop is that if you're gonna build it, you better be ready to build it three times. Uh, if you're gonna do a scratch build, especially if your kid wants to do a scratch build, I wanna make a turkey out of something, or you know, whatever the project they wanna do, get them ready for, just set their minds into the space of you're gonna build it three times, because you always will build it three times. The first time is to wrap your head around the project. The second time is to obtain your true point of view on how you want the project executed. And the third time is the use of all that knowledge to make the thing that is useful to you. And this is what happened with me in this wiring diagram. So first, I just drew out all the components. Uh, the blower, I don't know why I didn't call it a fan, it's shorter to write. Safety light, that's the blue flash. The work lights, those sit up on top of the visor. The visor light, that's the ring around my neck that's totally not scientific but looks great. PA system, and then the seven switches that go in the control unit. So once I had that, okay, that gives me a sense of the number of components I have to deal with. So I turn that over, uh, no, sorry, I grabbed a new piece of paper and I drew out the components and I put lights on one side and I put the other stuff on the other side. And I have an extra switch just in case. And this is, this is how you do a wiring diagram, all right? I mean, and there are some conventions, right? A switch always looks like this. I make my light bulbs look like that. There's a hot side and a cold side. And as you can see, once I drew out these components and I drew, you know, the hot side and cold side of the light, the hot side and cold side of the blower and the PA system, then I literally just take the hot lead of the battery and bring it to the master switch. That master switch, that hot leg that is switchable goes to the hot leg of all of the other switches. Meanwhile, the cold leg goes to the cold side of all the electronics. It goes to the ground side. I know cold, ground, my apologies for my nomenclature. So now this shows me my wires. But there's one more piece of information I need, which is how many wires am I going to need to run between the hard upper torso and the backpack? Because I wanna be able to remove the backpack, I need to know where these lines go. So that led to a third execution in which I drew out the components that were on the backpack side, the battery, the blower, and the safety light, the blinky blue light, and then I drew the stuff that was on the hut side, and that is all seven of the control switches, plus the work lights, visor light, and PA system. I still have an extra switch. I don't know where it's gonna go. So now when I draw the wires across here, I end up with what fills this pill here, which is 
the four leads I need to run between the two doors. Now I put in three four pin DINs and it turns out right now I only need one. That's crazy. Now I may end up with needing to run more for the PA system because it's gonna have a speaker and I'm gonna to wanna to put the speaker behind me so that it's not uh, in line of sight of the microphone. Uh, and that means I'll have to take the speaker from the PA system that's here and run those two wires back over here. Uh, and that'll be the next drawing. And that's literally why I'm working this out. I am trying to figure out what is in this space. Once I know all of the leads that are going to be part of my uh, plug-in power between the backpack and the hard upper torso, then I literally just start cutting wires to go between them, right? I need a wire to go from the battery's hot lead over to uh, uh, switch lead, uh, sorry, uh, plug-in lead number one, and then goes out from number one over to where it needs to go. The thing about a wiring diagram is that it is literally a construction diagram. Once, now that I have this, this is all I need to button in my system. And like I said, it's so relaxing to have drawn this out. And again, it took three tries, but it's so relaxing to draw this out and then look at this and know that all I need to do is like, okay, the visor light needs a lead coming off there to there. This one needs a lead coming off there to there. This one needs a lead coming, like every lead's description is where I need it to be. And it's just plug and play. And Frankly, I've, I've had pretty good luck with wiring diagrams over the years. Plus, when something goes wrong, this is your guide to chasing down the problem. I love me a wiring diagram. There you go. I'm pausing here at the front because I'm just not sure I'm right, but I do think that I'm right. I think that it is time for me to actually wire these guys both up. I think I know all the things I need to know. I know the primary systems. I have one extra switch for an extra feature should I need it. Uh, and I know all of the electrical legs I'm carrying between the hard upper torso and the backpack, and it's six leads. It's four electrical leads plus two for a speaker, and I bought these little beautiful speakers. The way I'm going to do the PA system is you'll talk into this microphone in the thing, and this will be behind you, like out of the line of sight of the microphone. I think that should keep it from feeding back in there, but I'll find out at the end of today. Uh, so with my wiring diagram and a, um, a seven switch bank that will serve as my um, stand-in control bank here, because Brett hasn't finished those yet, uh, I should be able to get much of the wiring harness for both of these done today. It's gonna be a lot of busy work, so get ready for time lapses. All right, so here's one great thing about a wiring diagram is that as I complete each leg of it, I'm coloring it in. This is an ass kicker of a gig because I've got several more hours. Um, first of all, I'm trying to make sure all my wiring lengths are right because I've got a master switch block that sits out here out the front. And you can see the spaghetti going on. That switch block comes back to here. I've got a 12 volt bus bar I've built, a five volt transformer for the neck ring. This is the main power. And right now I'm able to unplug the two parts and put them back together and things are working. Um, the way I'm double checking that they're working is I've made a, um, a, a practice switch bank here what you can see, I've got the master, the fan, the PA, the work light, visor light, and safety lights. And when I turn on visors, for instance, the light comes on. Yeah, it's really sweet. And here comes the fan. Wait, fan. It requires a, such a careful methodolog methodological approach. As I go back and forth between each one of these, I short out the batteries every now and then, they shut down, I open them back up. I'm trying to make sure I'm doing the same thing for both. For instance, I've got a hot 12 volt pair of wires coming up here for the lights that I haven't even determined what those are gonna be yet. I thought this would be this afternoon's work. This is a full day of work. I'm wiring up two, uh, two complete sets like this, but Getting the fan to work and getting these switches, I keep wanting to be careful around these. It's only 12 volts. It's like, it's not gonna electrocute me. But that, that is really, really sweet. Yep, next one is this little guy. 
One of the most startling differences between NASA's spacesuits and the spacesuits from almost every movie you've ever seen is the lighting. NASA's suits have a surprisingly small amount of lighting and blinky lights, whereas in science fiction movies, blinky lights are how we know things are complicated. <laughs> Um, just think of the, like, all of the beautiful detail that goes into, like, Alien Covenant helmets, uh, or the Alien helmets from the movie Alien. NASA suits usually only have work lights up here, and that's it. I am adding more for dramatic effect, and because I'm a movie prop costumer, um, I'm gonna follow the Hollywood rules for the kind of look that I'm looking for. It's time to install the RCU. Here it is. Uh, I'm, each of us is getting a slightly different shaped uh, front display unit. That's just because I'm at, this is the kind of aestheticizing where I think the, these pieces will break apart a little bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put seven switches into this unit and just transfer over all the wire plugs. I'm not gonna like muck around with this business. I'm gonna make it modular and easy. Oh, oh, I see. So one of the things about the switches on the astronaut suits is that they all have switch guards on them so they can't be accidentally switched. That's definitely right and proper. And so I've got these guards I bought. I actually, I don't even remember exactly where I got them. It was a while back and I just picked up a bunch of samples because uh, I was curious about them. And it turned out that when I needed them for this, doop. I had exactly as many as I needed. I'm gonna need to extend some of these jumpers, but the first thing is that all seven switches are wired in together on these. I think this is part of the, the lighting arrangement. So, that goes like this. Work visor safety. Okay, uh, and just make sure the master power switch works. Yep, okay, so I turn that on. This should be fan. And it lights up. That should be the PA. That's the extra. And over here, we should have three lights. Safety. Visor. Work! Ah, it all works! Woohoo! <sighs> One thing you should know about the making of things is that that which is the first test after a first assembly, almost never works. Seriously, you just be prepared that it's not gonna work. Be prepared that it's not gonna work. In fact, once I install it, that should probably be the way in which it stops working. Like, that's how this goes. So, let's see here. Uh, oh, this is super exciting. I've been waiting to do this part for a long time. So, we got that going out there. Great, great, great. Nice and secure. And that is on. This is the PA. And this is extra. Uh, so, turn on the fan. Turn on the lights. Excellent. And I can turn all those off with both the master power switch. Yep. And, 
Oh, yeah, I know. I can also turn them off with the front master power switch, although that stays lit. That's how I know master power is on. We have a working control display unit. Uh, now, I may add some more stuff to this, but that is great. Both suits are now fully wired. I just need to put the switches in the other uh, control display unit. And the electrical part is mostly done. The PA system needs a bunch of back and forth. But besides that, everything else is wired. Oh! To show you. <gasps> All right, so oh. this is the latest version. Okay, Don't the way your your tone tells me it's not perfect. It's it's. Eh, okay. It's, yeah. All right. So All right. this was what we were working with before. <laughs> I took the new final hero visors. I traced yeah. them out, and I transferred this to digital, and I made a prototype in wood, which eh, it sort of works. Uh, regular watchers of the channel know that while I have access to 3D printers and rapid manufacturing machinery, we've got a laser cutter, we've got a CNC router, I tend to build everything by hand just because that's my practice. That's the way I like to do it. But uh, when it comes to the visors, when it comes to these, um, well, first of all, the visor of the XEMU is a fundamentally different visor than NASA has used before. And it is the one place in which I absolutely need a CNC solution because the visor has four parts. There's an inner bubble and an outer bubble. And they are held in orientation by a neck ring, which basically is a circumferential ring uh, that attaches to a matching ring on the suit. That's it. So rather than a helmet, it is more just like a bolt-on windshield for the spacesuit. And because it's a bolt-on windshield, I need to use the CNC router to cut channels to receive the plastic and hold them in their correct orientation. But this is such a non-trivial job. Uh, Jen Schachter is going to come in and do this. And in order to do this, uh, note that they blow this out of a ring here, but it's this wide out here. I'm going to be cutting this on a slight slant. And Jen is going to have to figure out what the perimeter of both the inner and outer bubble are in order to cut a channel to receive them with the knowledge that they're all a little bit different from each other as well. So she needs to accommodate that. This is an ass kicker of a job and is a real mind bender. And it is just the kind of thing that I love to delegate to just like one person to concentrate on for a week, um, which is about what it'll take Jen to turn out two functional neck rings for inner and outer bubbles. You are, this is, this is, um, the ass kickingness of this job will pay you back later because you'll be working on something amorphous and you'll have cut your teeth on this because this is a bear of a thing to do. Yeah, I mean, it's been a learning experience for me and I typically avoid this kind of stuff for this exact reason because I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to have to be this precise. Yeah. But it's a good thing for me to learn. So. Indeed. This visor ring isn't perfect. While she perfects it, I'm going to use the plywood ring and hold this all in orientation. And I'm going to actually stick it on the suit so I can try a double visor for the first time. That'll also allow me to make sure the curve underneath my work light head capper actually is correct. There are so many little moving parts to this deal. Can you tell that I am in the pleasurable state of like dumping a huge amount of information into my brain. It is a very pleasurable moment. This foam double stick, there are a few things more tenacious than it. And for that reason, I almost never use it in construction, but it is fabulous for test fits in which you've got a lot of weight to deal with. And that's this visor is exactly that. The moment you cut this with scissors, you got to go get some acetone and clean your scissors. And your scissors will be like, thank you. Okay. Ladies and germs. Dude, I got to put it on. Oh, clearly I can't move because I've wrapped my own construction around the stand. So here we go. Let's see here. Okay, systems check. Lights. Yeah. Ooh. Yep. Yeah. And now uh, comms are here. One, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, can you hear me? 
You can hear me loud and clear? Okay, and somebody... I don't know that I'll be able to hear inside here. That feedback is terrible. All right, I'll have to work on that. This is not working. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, master switch. Nice. Hello, hello. Dude. Look at this thing. We have a suit to well, show you. I want to shake his hand, but he has no hand. Oh, no. What the, happened? The gloves are still coming from Italy. Okay, that's fair. Uh, and I, I don't have the orange cladding for your suit yet. But I wanted to give you a view of what it's gonna look like. The progress is incredible. Uh, but I mean, okay, lights mounted, antennas, switches that look like they may light up. I don't want to be ah, they do light up. They do light up. Can yeah, I go ahead, one? go ahead, do it. Uh, oh, that's the work lights up here. That's oh, the visor. Yeah. Yep. Here comes the signal light. I love that. That's your fan. I know we talked about it last time, but just the 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 blink and fade, the blink and fade, the the, the cadence on it is just. It, it grabs your attention. Right, and it speaks to work. It speaks to like, if there's a blue, they, I just see this and I instantly feel like my boss is Ed Harris. <laughs> yes. Right? Like yes. It's, it's Virgil Brigman's crew from the abyss transplanted to the moon. I love that you got these lights all rigged up. Is this for 5G? What is this for back here? Uh, this is actually, funnily enough, I just wanted more shit coming out of the yeah. top. But when you, I was like, does anyone make fake antennas? So I searched fake antennas. Whole industry oh, yeah. of fake antennas. I had no idea. And that was like a self-stick something. And I just thought it looked weird enough and sli slightly off angled that I liked it. This looks like we're getting uh, UHF here. We've got ham radio. This, I don't even know. Well, and I thought about a video transmitter, which would be like this big uh. toroidal thing up here. And then you got sound, which is like, you know, plexiglass with copper right, round right. around it. Some Wi-Fi like panels or something as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, this is cool. This is a nice button. It just, it looks cool. This makes it look like the suit can do anything. That's, like, I feel like I could take this anywhere and could communicate with anybody. Exactly what I'm thinking. Um, I want to show you the inside. I'm really happy with the control display unit. Come on in and take a look. I just, I actually, you know, carefully, after getting all the wiring right, go and clamped it in and like, I just... It's just, clean. It pleases It is me. clean. And it has, it's, it worked the first time I hooked it up, which never ever happens. Were there any hiccups during the build at all? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had to, th like I said, I had to throw out the hard shorts. Right. Because that just didn't work. What yeah. is this material here? Well, this is, this suit is actually part of the um, old EMU you put on in the first episode. These are the pant bottoms. So these are actually made of a real Teflon coated nylon from NASA. I don't think it's officially beta cloth, but it's a, it's a really close equivalent. Yeah, it's super interesting texture. Yeah, I know. It's, um, their whole goal was to make clothing that resisted uh, dirt and I think BO, but I'm not sure how well that works. Okay. Well, something tells me that something that they're not talking about is that it probably smells like sweat socks on the International Space Station. Right? I, yeah. I'm so sure. Yeah. I'm gonna be like a human hot pocket in there. I'm you're gonna right. be a little toasty. No, you will. And the pants are actually gonna be, you're, it's gonna be like wearing a blanket on your legs and then this hard shell on your, you're right. And the fan is strong, but it can't overcome that much. We put out a lot of BTUs. NASA actually wears a thing called a LCBG, liquid cooling ventilation garment. And it is um, a full set of coveralls of netting with plastic tubes sewn into it so that it feeds cold water all around your chest. And we are gonna have something almost identical to that. Go ahead and put this on. The Savage Industries? Well, it's, a, I'm just, it's just de-logoed. I didn't build this. <laughs> So, Take full credit. It's fine. Go ahead and zip that up. Yep. Okay. When I turn this on, you should start to feel it. It's going to take a few minutes for it to start to really circulate. Okay. So I've got, oh, I can feel the motor. Yeah, the motor. So there's going. a battery powered motor that's going to pi Oh! Oh, hello. Yeah. That is, that is, that is rather pleasant. Yeah. Um, and yeah. against your skin, you'll feel it even more keenly. Yeah. And you don't run it full time. Just inside in the thing. You run it as need. you need it. Okay. I have found that I can melt five pounds of ice in 10 minutes if really? I have to. Yeah, we put out a lot of energy. But what you really do is, uh, and Chris Hadfield told me this is how they do it on the International Space Station too. You just ride the cooling just like as needed. You don't overtax it. You just keep on using it. And you're starting to feel it move up here. Yeah. Now I want to see if I can pick you up on a thermal camera. Uh, well, it's obviously much cooler than you. Oh, wow. 
Now I can see that you are getting more cooling on your left side than your right. Am and, I right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I can actually see that in the, in the file here. So it'll slowly move over to your right as we go, as it, as it gets through the rest of the tubing. That is so weird. It's, it's beautiful. You really, I mean, the, the, the progress is incredible. Uh, I, I love the work lights up here too. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm really happy. I was able to, uh, I was able to dim them down. They're super bright yeah. uh, at their full capacity. So right now they're at like 10%. How did you get those dimmer? Uh, just... I actually just put the dimmer in line here. I'll oh, show okay. you. Yeah. So I can just, uh, I can bring them up or bring them down from back here. That's yeah. smart. Ah. So are the, I mean, is there, what are the fundamental finishing touches? I know with the orange, I mean, we have gloves to get involved, but the, those are gonna be slip are, on. Yeah, and, the gloves are on their way. Are those uh, gonna lock into place as well, or are they just gonna kind of slide under? It's gonna be magnets. Okay. So it'll be magnets that brings them Much in. Much more convenient. Yeah. Uh, gloves, we got the fabric coverings, the pants for both, uh, and boot integration for both. It's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's finishing um, touches. I think, the wiring and the electrical and mechanical issues have all been solved, which I am surprised I get to say that right now. Yeah. That, that usually is the kind of thing that would still be kicking my butt, but uh, we moved through it methodically and it's been working. Amazing. Adam? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Dude, really next, time, next time we'll put these on, I'll have a full orange suit for you to actually wear. Okay. And I'll still be wearing the vest if that's okay. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. How's this look? Does this look cool when it I'm It looks away? like you're carrying a load in your pants. And Great. Not, not okay. the good kind. <laughs>
Uh, and you'll also notice my wedding ring is gone. It's because when I was doing this earlier with another visor, I actually put some scratches in the visor with my wedding ring and that's, then I felt dumb. So I put it in my pocket. It is very weird to not have it on my hand. Um, and yeah, I am going to uh, sand this. This actually is a really, really important technique in model making. The large board with sandpaper glued to it is your friend. Um, it may seem like flattening this by doing this for a while is laborious, and that's because it is. But when you take like two vacuum forms like this and you do this, they, they meet and life is good. This is a really important modeling tool, the, the wide flat sanding surface. Um, it'll get you out of a lot of jams and it's worth like having in your mental palace as a solution. So I've been mostly just focused on um, patterning and making for the fabric for around the hut. I still have some panels to finish just for the torso portion of this. I'm going to add um, Velcro to the actual hut because I have the soft side already here so that I can just have that fully connected since everything is fitting so lovely. I'm going to cut away extra fabric around the where the head is as well as the arms so we can reattach the arms and this will be finalized. And then um, I have the trousers patterned. Um, I have the lower leg finished. I've got the, I just need to cut and sew the top of the trouser, then move on to patterning around our components here, as well as the lights up here. We are making the uh, control display unit, which is this uh, trapezoidal construction uh, that goes on the chest of the suit. Um, has a very nice lit switches. Um, and this is a folded sheet aluminum structure. And we started with something, you know, a few, a few rough tries just to get the, the, the shape all laid out. Um, and this is pretty much the finished form that we start folding with. Um, and this is the end result. In not too long, you're roared with something like this. Um, there are little flaps on the edge that we rivet together, but it, it ends up being a very strong and, and solid little box. Um, then we punched holes to put the uh, illuminated switches with the switch guards and and this is going to be mounted on the chest of the suit um, all this wiring coming out is going to go to the switches All right, so uh, this is the last visor and it's going really well, um, but I'm about to seal the outer visor over the inner visor. And when I do that, I don't get access to the inside anymore. So I'm making sure that the inside visor is clean, is as clean as I want it to be. So I'm using a plastic polish cleaner to just really dial this in and I got to do the inside and the out so I can really see it. All right. Now the one thing about this arrangement with drilling the pinned holes is that I can see the holes. So I'm going to give them a little bit of um, China ink into the holes to make them not visible. I'm going to do that with all four and that should help make them go away. Is it clear that I love what I do? Because I do. Because I do. Reader, I am sealing the two. Awesome. In case it's not clear already, this is an achievement. Um, Jen just did amazing work wrapping her head around this, which is an ellipse that is not symmetrical in either of its dimensions. And yet we got two sets of visors to fit on this. Ah, it's really, really nice work. I couldn't be more pleased. 
Uh, I am going to add a little bit of some detailing, but for the most part, she is done. The days are flying past, I swear. I get in here around 8.45, 9 o'clock every morning, and I just look at my watch, and it's like 4. Uh, but Christine has finished the cladding on the hut with the surrounds for the shoulders. So I am going to attach that because I have finished the visor goodness. Oh yeah, this is gonna be so awesome. Um, this is gonna be the first time I see uh, much of the top half of my suit together. Wow. Right? Starting to look pretty. So, I got some marking to do. I'm gonna use uh, countersunk wood screws in here, but I can't just drill right through the plastic and the fabric. The fabric will, there's a terrible thing that happens when you do that. <laughs> I have to drill my holes first, then I'm gonna use an awl and punch through the fabric, and then I'll pop the screws in. Uh, so, but first I have to measure the positions of the screws. Excellent. All right. Remember, don't tighten down any until they're all in. Okay, from the other side then, left arm, left arm, left arm. That's the top, top dead center. Frankly, given how that was going at the beginning, kind of surprised how that went. Ooh, top, 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 this, 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 grr, grr, grr. So excited. Yeah, that did it. There we go. That one's good. I got to tell you, when I first started this project, I thought this, uh, the helmet was going to be permanently attached. However, the moment I started watching a bunch of videos of them doing suit-ups, I realized the detachable helmet is like a key and important aspect of its, of being able to actually work on this suit. Ah, there you go. Now we get to find out if I made my measurements correctly. <laughs> yeah. That's a little closer tolerance than I normally like. However, it's pretty.
Now that starts to look like a real thing. I'm gonna do a wearability test and just wear this around the shop for half an hour to kind of like see if there's any extended wear problems that I run into. This is always a really good idea to do with your builds. Um, so funny that I have an extra pair of space pants. Mm -hmm. No, nice. Yeah. Right, all right. It's not bad. I'm gonna walk around a little bit. This is not bad at all. Oh, you can hear me, I don't even have to yell. Um, no, I've been in for about 10 minutes. The anti-fog is phenomenal. The heat is a problem, but uh, that would, the chest coolers should accommodate for that. I have to weigh it and figure out how heavy it is. I think I can solidify it on my body so I'm doing less work with my core to keep it stable. It's a way more complicated relationship between this machine and my body than I thought it was. It's a fascinating, I mean, obviously it's not necessarily what happens in zero gravity, but in zero gravity, I still have to be locked into this thing well enough that it conforms to my body. Yeah, I'm definitely way more adding way more padding to the shoulder straps. That's for damn sure. Yes, yeah, 35 pounds. That's a real camping pack and not as well distributed across my body as a camping pack. Yeah, I guess I got some working out to do. Oh, that is so perfect. I'll even be able to find the boots when they're at the end of this. Okay. Excellent. Let's turn that on so I can breathe. All right. That's a very civilized entry and mounting procedure. Thank you. Awesome. This is the full first first full official test. From a function and wearing standpoint, it's a radical improvement over yesterday. I, uh, at Norm's suggestion, I moved the pick point for the back straps instead of down here, out here at my chest and ele uh, 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 back a little bit. So it really solidifies my place in here. And now it feels much more like the whole pack is attached to me. Get all the way down, come all the way back up. I can reach my, oh yeah, I can reach that and put that back on. What? Amazing. By the way, facial recognition works on my phone through the visor. Well done, Apple. I didn't know that was something you were planning to do. Oh, I am so happy with this. All I need now is a spaceship.